uh, in our lives to come together this evening also <clears throat> to listen from the word of god especially from the book of revelation and uh, uh, so this evening uh, as we are moving on uh, now we have uh, uh, joel george uh, he is going to share the main points of the uh, last class amen yes joel you are ready yes in the last class we learned about the each gospel writer shows different aspects of jesus based on total concept cons, context of each gospel matthew shows jesus as a lion mark shows jesus as a ox luke shows jesus as a man and john shows jesus as a eagle preeminence of four creatures lion supreme among all beasts ox supreme among the cattle eagle supreme around the birds man is supreme among all creatures towards the throne all glory and praise towards jesus different types of interpretation methods topical interpretation the petrist view the historical interpretation the futurist interpretation the second coming of jesus how the rapture is happening jesus tells he will be coming the second time two faces two appearances of jesus christ appearance of jesus in mid air jesus will descend from heaven with a shout voice of archangel trumpet of shout dead in christ will rise up transportation of our body reunion with dead in christ rapture of the church praise god thank you joel uh... and uh, we have been discussing about the second coming of jesus christ right <clears throat> the second coming of jesus christ and the uh, and i told you that there are uh, two phases or two stages or two appearances for the second coming of jesus christ and the first one was appearance of jesus in mid air and all those points that means what happens in uh this appearance in the, the first appearance of jesus christ during the time of the second coming of jesus christ amen so i think there was a there was a homework about uh, what would be the second appearance of jesus or when will it happen so that was the homework and that was the question i gave you uh anybody is ready to share that what is going to happen or when it is going to happen the glorious the second one the second appearance of jesus if you have anything to share you can you can just unmute and say no idea we don't know the exact date or time but i think in luke it says like signs like false prophet false teachings and uh deceiving people like coming like jesus christ and stuff like that like it just gives small descriptions okay that is one answer and the second any any other any other answer or any other uh comments on that i think you are getting ready to to get all those things okay so we will continue um okay uh, thank you jewel so you know uh, i was uh, uh, saying about the first appearance of jesus christ that uh, in the first appearance of jesus in the in the mid air uh, jesus will descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel will be there trumpet of shout will be there and dead in christ shall rise up uh, the transformation of a body will happen 
and our reunion with, uh, uh, reunion, uh, with the dead in Christ will happen and rapture of the church will happen and all those things and uh, that, that we were uh, discussing from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 uh, verses 15 and 17. We have many uh, verses uh, to read but we are not uh, going to read all the verses but we were reading only a few verses to understand what will be going to happen uh, uh, during the time of the uh, first appearance of Jesus Christ uh, in the in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Okay, now we will go to the second appearance of Jesus Christ that is called his glorious appearance to the earth. His glorious appearance to the earth. So there are uh, three verses given. Uh, these three verses speaks about the glorious appearance to the earth. Uh, uh, Jesus's glorious appearance to the earth. That is uh, Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. Acts chapter 1 verse 11, Matthew chapter 24 verse 30. So we will read uh, uh, all of those verses, then uh, we will move on. Yeah. Uh, who is ready? Yeah. Elsa, are you ready? Yeah. So we're reading all three verses? Yes. At the same time? Yes. Okay. Um, Behold, he is coming with clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. Acts chapter 1, verse 11. Uh, and said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you go him, as you saw him go into heaven. Matthew 24, 30. Um, then will appear in heaven the sign of, son, of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of earth will mourn, and they will see Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with the power and great glory. Okay. Uh, uh, we already read all these uh, uh, verses. Uh, I know that uh, you didn't get uh, time to listen to those verses because you were uh, writing down all the points. Okay, no problem. We will uh, uh, look into that points, and I will uh, try to explain all those things. And, you know, uh, from these three verses, we understand uh, this glorious appearance will be visible to everyone who are in this earth. This appearance, the second appearance or the glorious appearance of Jesus Christ will be visible to everyone who are in this earth. So that is what we read in, in those verses. So, and again, uh, this will happen seven years after the first stage of his appearance the seven years after the first stage of his appearance. So we already uh, discussed about what will be the first appearance of Jesus Christ in midair. And after the first appearance of Jesus Christ, the second appearance, so the second glorious appearance will happen uh, maybe after seven years. That means uh, after the seven years of great tribulation. So after, this, after the first appearance of Jesus Christ, there will be a tribulation period of seven years. And even uh, in between, let me tell you one thing, there are different views on the great tribulation. That means the, uh, the, the seven years of great tribulation will happen. Uh, somebody says that, okay, this has already happened. That is already finished. And uh, uh, some people say that, okay, uh, before the second coming of Jesus Christ, uh, uh, these seven years of uh, uh, great tribulation will happen. And some people say after the second coming of Jesus Christ only, uh, this tribulation will be happening. And some people say uh, uh, in the middle of the seven years of tribulation, Jesus Christ will come. So whatever it may be, uh, this is what we understand from, the, from, the, uh, from these portions and uh, from other portions also, that uh, after the seven years of great tribulation, uh, uh, this will happen. The second appearance of Jesus will be happening. And uh, the raptured believers also will come down with Jesus in that appearance. In the second appearance, the raptured believers, that means the believers and the, uh, the, the saints of God, the people, those who are already raptured to heaven with Jesus Christ, those people also will be coming down uh, with Jesus in the 
second appearance of Jesus. That is what we read in uh, these verses. And uh, uh, after that, we will rule over the world with Jesus for thousand years in millennium, a millennial kingdom. So thousand, thousand, thousand years of uh, millennial kingdom. Uh, we also will be with Jesus to rule over the world. Okay, and uh, all those things maybe uh, about the millennial kingdom we will be studying uh, later um, when we move on. Okay, so just I'm uh, quoting those points only. And after that, after as we go through the the other chapters, maybe uh, cha after chapters after six of Revelation, we will be studying about the millennial kingdom and tribulation and all those things. Okay, so uh, in Zechariah chapter fourteen, verse four, Zechariah chapter fourteen, verse four, uh, uh, this appearance is mentioned there. Okay, we will read that verse, then we will think about that. Uh, this second appearance of Jesus Christ is mentioned in Zechariah chapter. Uh, 14 verse 4 yeah on that day his feet shall stand on the mount o mount of olives that lies before jerusalem on the east and the mount of olives shall be split in two from east to west by a very wide valley so that one half of the mount of the mount shall be shall move northward and the other half southward okay so we believe that uh, the first appearance will not in in the first appearance jesus will not be coming to this earth Jesus will not be coming to this yet. He will be coming to the midair. Okay, that's what we read in uh, Thessalonians. Okay, but in this second appearance, what happens? Jesus will be uh, 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 putting his feet uh, on the Mount of Olives. That is what we read in Zechariah chapter 14, verse 4. Uh, Jesus will put his feet on the, on the Mount of Olives, and uh, 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 which is in, in front of the Jerusalem on the east and the Mount of Olives will be split in middle from east to west by a, a very large valley so that half of the mountain will be moved towards the north and the other half towards the south. So this is what we understand from this verse. At the same time, uh, the Jewish people are not believing uh, in the first phase of the second coming of Jesus Christ. The Jewish people, they don't believe in the first phase of the second coming of Jesus Christ because uh, they were not aware about the Christianity and the Christians and their rapture. Okay, so even when Jesus was there and even uh, when the apostles were preaching, they were preaching about the second coming of Jesus and the kingdom of God and all those things. At the same time, some of more, a majority of the Jewish people they were not knowing anything and they were not understanding what it is and they were not believing also in uh, in Jesus and they did not believe in Jesus and the, most of the I mean Jewish people they rejected Jesus and they said uh, we cannot accept Jesus as our Messiah and they were not believing in the death of uh, death of Jesus and also they were not believing in the first appearance of or first appearance of first phase of uh, Jesus Christ, that, that means the second coming of Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, uh, and the rapture also. So they were always expecting a literal political kingdom. The Jewish people or the people of Israel, they were always expecting a literal political kingdom. You, you will get the examples for that, why we can say that uh, those people, the people of Israel, they were expecting a literal political kingdom literal political kingdom, okay. So they were expecting a political leader or a king, uh, but we understand the birth of Jesus was entirely different than their expectation. That means the Jewish people, they were always expecting a Messiah. They were expecting a Messiah as, a, as a, that, that Messiah will come and Messiah will be the political leader or the political king uh, to become the king of the uh, the kingdom of Israel. So they were expecting that uh, all the people from all over the world, all the people of Israel from all over the world, they will gather together in Jerusalem and this Messiah will be the political leader or the king of that kingdom. So Jewish people, they rejected him or they did not accept him. Uh, you know, when we read uh, uh, gospels, we understand I mean, uh, we, we, we read there that three wise men, they were uh, uh, traveling to see the baby Jesus. And they were traveling uh, as directed by the star on the sky. So they saw the star on the sky 
and they were just directed by the sky to meet or to uh, bow down or to see the baby Jesus. But on the way, they thought if Jesus is the king, then he is supposed to be born in a palace. Okay, so this is what happened uh, for the three wise men, those who were traveling to see uh, baby Jesus. You know, they were thinking, okay, if Jesus is the king, if Jesus is the king, then uh, he is supposed to be born in palace. So they went to the palace of Herod, the king, uh, but they could not find him there. Okay, so this is the reason I said that they were expecting a political leader to re-establish their kingdom. They were expecting a political leader to re-establish their kingdom. Okay, so again, the another example which you can uh, uh, which you can get from uh, the the life of uh, the people of okay the disciples of Jesus Christ. You know, when Jesus was talking about the kingdom of God, even before the resurrection, before the death of Jesus Christ, and also after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So when we read uh, Acts chapters 1 and 2, we understand uh, after the resurrection of Jesus also, uh, he was uh, uh, giving many informations about the kingdom of God. You know? Even disciples, even the disciples of Jesus, they asked, when are you going to establish your kingdom? Okay, when are you going to establish your kingdom? So even in the mind of the disciples of Jesus Christ, they were having a, an idea that Jesus will establish the kingdom and we will be the, the rulers of that kingdom. So that was the expectation of uh, the even the disciples also were having. So that's the reason they were asking, when are you going to establish your kingdom? Are you going to establish your kingdom in this time that's what they asked okay so they were also maybe expecting a kind of political leader or a king for the kingdom of israel uh, whatever it may be uh, both of these faces or both of these appearances of jesus will be a blessing for us the christians as we are the christians it will be a blessing for us the first appearance and the second appearance of jesus christ will be a blessing for the christians for the believers that is our expectation even. Okay, now, uh, when you read uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, we already read that. Elsa already read that verse. Uh, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, it says that, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him, so it is to be a man. So in this verse, in this uh, uh, chapter 1, verse 7, we read, there are uh, particularly written two points are there. Those who pierced him will see him. Those who pierced him will see him. Who are these people? The pierced ones. That means they are the people of Israel and also the Roman people. The people of Israel and also the Roman people. Okay, so to understand that, we will read uh, uh, maybe two more verses, that is Matthew chapter 27, verse 22, Matthew chapter 27, verse 22, and also Acts chapter 2, verses 22 and 23, yeah. Pilate said to, him, to, said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus who was called Christ? They all said, let him be crucified. Okay, so the people of Israel, they were saying, Crucify Jesus, crucify Jesus, okay? So those who are the people, those who pierced him, okay? Pierced him, that means crucified Jesus. Again, in Acts chapter 2, verses 22 and 23. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This Jesus delivered up according to the de definite plan and fo foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of a lawless man. Okay, so this verse says that the people of Israel, they rejected Jesus and they said, crucify him, crucify him. Okay, and they, those people are there. And also the Roman government, you know, the Roman people and Roman government were supporting and they were uh, trying and they did this uh, crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, because they were the government on those, on those days. So we understand that those who pierced him 
uh, in Revelation chapter 1 verse 7 are the people of Israel and also the Roman people. And also the other usage which is seen in that particular verse, it is uh, the tribes will mourn over him. The tribes will mourn over him. That means all the Gentile nations, the all the Gentile nations. That's the reason I said uh, the second appearance of Jesus Christ will be visible for every one of us, for everyone, uh, those who are in this earth. So that's what we teach in that way. Now, uh, let me let me uh, give you some information about uh, the things about what happens after our death. What happens after our death? As per the as per the people were asking some questions about uh, uh, these things. You know, uh, in the previous class also, uh, some of you ask uh, uh, some of the questions about this, and also uh, some other uh, questions also. We will try to uh, clarify all those questions. And also, uh, if you're having any other questions or comments on this, and uh, you can just, uh, I mean, give to me, we will discuss, I mean, next class also. So uh, now we will think about something about uh, what happens after our death. Okay, so just before that, uh, me, I have a question. I have a question that is, that is, um, uh, who was the oldest person lived in this earth mentioned in Bible? Who was the oldest person lived in this earth? Methuselah. Methuselah, correct. Okay. How many years he lived? Joel? 969. Very good. Very good. Methuselah. Is the oldest person mentioned in the Bible, and he lived uh, to be 969 years. Okay, that is there in Genesis chapter 5, verse 27. So, you know, who are the other persons lived above 900 years old? Any, any, any one or two persons who lived. Oh, it is there. Okay, yeah. Uh, okay, so you can you can take it down. Yeah, there are totally seven persons. Uh, Alvin, you did a mistake. <laughs> okay, before before asking the question, don't <laughs> give the uh, screen sharing. Okay, there are totally seven persons mentioned in the Bible who lived above nine hundred years. Okay, so that you can see in the list. Uh, the screen is there, and just I will read out that. I mean, uh, we are not going to read the verses but we are just, I mean, uh, taking down all those points. Uh, the first person is uh, Medusaleh. Medusaleh, uh, he lived uh, 969 years. Uh, that is in Genesis chapter five, verse 27. And the next person is Adam. Adam lived uh, to be uh, 930 years old. And that is in, in many verses, you can uh, get it from the slide. And the next person is Adam's son, Seth. Adam's son, Seth, he lived 912 years. Then the other person is son of Seth, Enosh. Enosh or Enos? E-N-O-S and E-N-O-S-H also is right. Uh, the son of Seth. He lived uh, 905 years, 905 years. The verses are there. Then the next person is Methuselah, Methuselah's grandfather, Jared, Jared, lived uh, 962 years. So that is from Genesis chapter five, verses 18 through 21. Medusalek's grandfather. And the other person is Medusalek's grandson, Noah. Medusalek's grandson, Noah. He lived 950 years. And the last person is Kenan. Kenan, he lived 910 years. 
910 years. Okay, so these are the seven persons who lived above 900 years in this earth, in this earth. Okay, so we see in the olden days, the people lived up to 969 years, up to 969 years. Okay, that means the average, average, I mean, uh, age was 900 plus, 900 plus. But when you read Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, Genesis chapter 6, verse 3, can you read that verse? 6, 3. Um, then yeah. the Lord said, my spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His day shall be 120 years. Okay, so what is that? God minimized the average of the age limit down to 120 years. Okay, it was about 900 in the beginning, in the older days. But after that, uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, before, yeah, before the fall, before the uh, flood, before the flood, God said, I will minimize the average of the age limit down to 120, 120 years. Then again, during the time of David, okay, during the time of David, it came down to 70 or 80, okay, that is what we read in Psalm number 90, verse 10, okay, no need, no need to read, we know that, okay, so our age will be uh, maybe uh, 70 or uh, maximum 80, but there are people still living maybe uh, above 80 also uh, these days, uh, but I mean, you know, even then, uh, uh, if they are uh, living maybe 80 above, uh, there will be many problems in their life and there will be many sickness and they'll be becoming weak and all those things are there. So we understand even, you know, even though God minimized the uh, uh, limit, the, the average of the age limit up to 120, there are uh, people lived more than that. Okay. Uh, you may be having a doubt in that. Okay? There are people lived after this, after, I mean, limiting this 120, there are many people who lived more than that? Example, example, uh, uh, Noah. Okay, Noah is the one of the example. Okay, we will leave that going. And uh, uh, again, uh, Bible says, uh, at any cost, the death is appointed for the human being. Okay, we are coming to the point. You know, we have many doubt about what is the death, and uh, uh, during the time of the death, what is happening in our for our body and where we are going, all those things are there. Okay, so uh, in Hebrews chapter nine, verse 27, uh, we read uh, Hebrews chapter nine, verse 27. Can you read that verse? Hebrews chapter nine, verse 27. Yeah. Um, and just as is and just as it was appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. Okay, what is that? Just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. Okay, we will be studying about the judgment later, but now we are studying about the death, death of human being. Okay, so I told you the the differences between the nine hundred above and one twenty and seventy and eighty, all those things. Now. We understand that at any cost, the death is appointed for the human being. The death is appointed for the human being. That's, a, that's what we read in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, that and just as it is appointed for man to die once, and after that comes judgment. Okay, So death is appointed for everyone. But, but we understand that if we are there, uh, before, I mean, uh, during the time of Jesus coming, we will not die. Okay? We will be uh, raptured. With Jesus Christ. Okay, that is another thing. Um, let us see what is actually the death in biblical view. What is actually death in biblical view? <clears throat> so, uh, Bible says that the death is a departure. What is death? Death is a departure. Okay, that means death occurs when the spirit leaves the body. Death. Okay, when the death is happening, or what is the biblical view? on the death, okay? Bible says death is a departure. Can you read James chapter two, verse 26? James chapter two, verse 26. 
For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also a, so also faith apart from the works is dead. Okay, what is that? Death is a departure. That means departure of the spirit from the body. That is the biblical view. Departure of the spirit from the body is known as the death in James chapter 2, verse 26. And again, what is the, the thought of Paul or what? I mean, uh, Apostle Paul is teaching about the death. The same thing he is teaching in Philippians chapter 1, verse 23, and also 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. Okay, what is the teaching of Paul regarding the death? That also is the departure. Death is a, a departure. Can you read that verse? Philippians chapter 1, verse 23, and 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. Yeah. I am hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. Okay, so in, in all these verses, we understand that when the spirit uh, leaves or when the spirit depart from our body, that is known as the death, death. Okay, so for example, when you read Luke chapter 7, 16, verse 22, Luke chapter 16, verse 22, we understand when Lazarus died, his spirit was, I mean, his spirit or he was carried away by the angels into Abraham's bosom. Okay, so into Abraham's bosom. He was taken to Abraham's bosom when he died. Okay, that's what we read about Lazarus. At the same time, what happened to the rich person uh, who was in, in that parable or in, the, in that event that we will uh, see later. Okay, so Lazarus, Lazarus died and his spirit was carried away by the angels into the, uh, Abraham's bosom. That means the departure of that person, departure of that person is known as the death of a person. Okay, and the second thing, the second view about uh, 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 the death, uh, in Bible is death is a separation from God. What is death? Death is a separation from God. Separation from God. I can give you one example for that. Now God said to Adam and Eve, uh, what is that? In the day that you eat the forbidden fruit, you will die. Okay. God said to Adam and Eve in the book of Genesis, it says that in the day that you eat the forbidden fruit, you will die. But physical death did not happen there. We understand the physical death did not happen there. When they ate the fruit, okay, so they disobeyed the commandment of God and they ate the forbidden fruit, but they, their physical death did not happen there, but they spiritually died. They spiritually died. So, uh, in the sense, separate, separation or separated from the relation and fellowship of God. What happens when they ate the forbidden fruit? Okay, the, something happened there that separate, they were separated from the relationship and fellowship of God. So that is called the spiritual death. And there are, there are three kinds of death mentioned in Bible. There are three kinds of death mentioned in Bible. Uh, uh, I think... Uh, 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 the, the children, um, maybe the teenagers class, I already, already uh, uh, discussed with them and they know about all those points, okay? So what is that? The spiritual death, the physical death, and the eternal death. The spiritual death, the physical death, and the eternal death. Okay, what is that? We know that the man is created with uh, uh, three elements. The man is created with three elements mainly, the body, the soul, and the spirit. Body, soul, and the spirit. Okay, so what happens? After the fall, uh, man's spirit became still or became dead. Okay, after the fall, after the fall of man, uh, his spirit became still or became dead. That means through sin, man lost the relationship with God. When they did the sin, when they uh, disobeyed the commandment of God, they lost the relationship with God. 
they lost the relationship with god that's why they were hiding themselves that's why they were hiding themselves this is called the spiritual death so as i told you the spiritual death happens when a person is when a person is separated from the fellowship of god when a person is separated from the from the relationship with god okay the spiritual death will happen for that person okay that is what uh, happened to adam and eve you know when they did the sin when they disobeyed the commandment of god they were knowing that they are naked and they were trying to hide themselves without seeing god so this is what we understand they lost their fellowship they lost their relationship with god when god was coming down from heaven to the garden of eden okay and the second death the second death is the the, the physical death the physical death this is very very familiar for us i mean what is the physical death the separation of soul and the spirit from the body is the physical death the separation of soul and the spirit from the body is physical death and the third death is eternal death eternal death so what is eternal death eternal death is the separation from the presence of god forever eternal eternal separation you can call it as eternal separation from the presence of god forever that means they cannot come again to rejoin with with god okay so eternally they are separated from the presence of god when it will happen after the judgment after the second coming and after the tribulation and after the uh, thousand years of millennial kingdom then after that it will happen eternally a group of people will be going to the eternal hell or eternal death that is called the eternal death and eternal death means the eternal separation from the presence of god forever and ever i mean and the the saints of god or the believers will be with jesus christ forever and ever that is the eternal life okay so this death or eternal death also is known as the second death in revelation chapter 20 verses 14 and 15 revelation chapter 20 verses 14 and 15 yeah great then the death and the, then death and hades were thrown into the lake of fire this is the second death the lake of fire and if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life he was thrown into the lake of fire okay lake of fire so the wicked and unbelievers will be thrown into the lake of fire forever the wicked and unbelievers will be thrown into the lake of fire forever this is known also as the second death okay death also the, the eternal death also is known as the uh, the second death maybe you you may be having a question why the eternal death is called or known as the second death okay But there is a reason because uh, the first death is the physical death the first death is the physical death so uh, and the second death is the eternal death okay so in in the order uh, there is spiritual death and then the physical death and eternal death is there but when a person is dying physically dying okay when that i mean death is happening so that is the first death and the second death means uh, when that person if if that person is wicked and if that person is not a believer if that person is not maybe if that person is a sinner if that person did not accept jesus christ as his personal savior then that person will be going to the eternal death or eternal hell or the lake of fire so that is the meaning that that will be the second death but there is no death at all for eternity eternally that person will be in that lake of fire there is no death okay so that is the meaning of that okay now uh you have to understand one more thing that only because of the spiritual death only because of the spiritual death the physical death and eternal death is happening i'll make it clear only because of the spiritual death when a person is spiritually dead then that person surely will have a physical death and also the eternal death okay but if that person is spiritually awakened 
if one person is getting a spiritual life, then that person may have the physical death. At the same time, that person will not never have the eternal death because that person is already reborn. That person is already reborn or that person have the rebirth experience or you can call it as a born again experience. Okay, so the spiritually living person will not have the eternal death, but that person may have the physical death. And if you are delivered from the spiritual death, we may have the physical death, but never will have the eternal death. Amen? Anyways, we, uh, uh, we know that we all will die one day. Okay, so, uh, but if the coming of Jesus tarries, okay, if the, if the coming of Jesus tarries, uh, uh, but if Jesus comes in our generation, we will be with Jesus without experience the physical death. Okay. If the coming of Jesus is happening in our generation, for example, if the second coming of Jesus is happening today or tomorrow, if we are living, if we are not dying, we are here, we are alive when Jesus is coming. If that is happening in that way, we will be with Jesus without experience the physical death. We will not have the physical death, okay? But Bible very clearly explains about the uh, uh, these things that okay, uh, if you are spiritually alive and if you are a reborn person or if you have that salvation experience, if you have that uh, experience of rebirth or uh, uh, regeneration, then that person will be taken into the eternity, to the eternity. Okay, so we will. Uh, if we are living, if we are alive in this world, when Jesus is coming in our generation, then we will be uh, with Jesus without experiencing the physical death. Okay. Now, uh, the Bible clearly explains about the last days of a human being. The last days of a human being. Or what happens to our physical body as we are getting older and older. Okay. Clearly, there are, there are many things which is uh, given in Bible, uh, especially in uh, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 3 to 7. Ecle um, uh, one second. You don't need to re uh, write down all these points. There are many points. Just, just wait, just wait. Okay. You may be having the points there in the, sc in the screen. At the same time, you don't want to uh, uh, write down all those points because that is there in the Bible itself. Okay. When you read, we will read that portion first. Okay, uh, Elsa, can you read Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses three to seven? Just read and we will move on. Okay, otherwise we will not get the time to explain all those things. Okay, uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses three to seven. Okay, uh, which speaks about uh, uh, in the last days of a human being, what happens, what happens? In the physical body, what happens in the last days of a human being? Yeah. In the day when the keepers of the house tremble and the strong men are bent and the grinders cease because there are few and those who look through the windows are dimmed and the doors of the street are shut. When the sound of the grinding is low, the one rises up at the sound of a bird and all the daughters of the song are brought low. They are also afraid of what is high. The terrors are in the way. The almond tree blossoms. The grasshopper drags itself along. And the desire fails because man is going to his eternal home. And the mourners go about the streets. Before the silver cord is snapped or the golden bowl is broken or the pitcher is shattered at the fountain or the wheel broken at cistern. And the dust returns to the earth as it was, and the spirit returns to God who gave it. Okay, so what is that? Uh, in this book, uh, uh, chapter 12, verses 3 to 7, Solomon says many things about uh, the weakness of our body as we get older. Okay, as we get older. So I'm not going to explain uh, the meaning of those words today uh, because of the lack of time, but. Uh, uh, for sure, one day I will speak about all these things. Uh, now let us uh, see what is going to happen one by one. Okay, what is that? In those days, the keepers of the house tremble. There is a meaning for that, but I'll be speaking about all these points one day for sure. Okay, today we don't have the time for that. Okay, in those days, the keepers of the house tremble, 
Then the strong men bow down. The grantors cease because they are few. Those that look through the windows grow dim. The doors are shut in the streets. The sound of grinding is low. They rise up at the sound of a bird. All the daughters of music are brought low. They are afraid of height and of terrors in the way. And the almond tree will blossom. The grasshoppers will be the burden. Desires will fail. Then the man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go about the streets. Okay, so these are the allegorical usages of Solomon about the changes which happens to the parts of the body in our olden age. Okay, now we are very strong. We are youth and we are strong and we have enough strength to go anywhere and we have enough strength to do something. But when we are getting old, when we are getting old, what happens in our body, we will become weak and weak and weak. Okay, at the, at, at, the, at the end of that weakness, then the man goes to his eternal home and the mourners go out about the streets. Okay, so we will be discussing what, what are the meanings of those allegorical words later. Now we will stop that point there and uh, now let us study what happens to us after the death. What happens to us after the death? That is the next point that we are going to discuss. <clears throat> What happens after the death? Okay, it is clear that Bible very clearly explains about the two groups of people, two groups of people, which are those? The first one is sinners and the, or the wicked people, sinners or the wicked people. The second one is saints of God or holy people. Okay, let, let me give some of the points from there, then we will go to the slide. Okay, so the first one is sinners and wicked people, first group, and the second group is saints of God or holy people. Okay, so there is a common belief that the sinners and the wicked people will go to heaven and the holy and saints of God will go to, sorry, sorry, the sinners and the wicked people will go to hell and the, the holy people or the saints of God will go to heaven. Yeah, sorry. Okay, so hell and heaven. This is the common belief among uh, among the uh, among the uh, almost all the Christians and also all other religions. They believe that uh, uh, those who believe in uh, heaven and hell, they believe that uh, okay, uh, some people will be going to heaven and some people will be going to hell. Okay, biblical uh, common belief also is same. Sinners and wicked people will go to heaven uh, to hell and the saints of God or the, the holy people or believers will be going to the heaven. But let's try to understand the reality about what is hell and what is heaven based on biblical view, okay? So we have to understand something about what is hell and what is heaven on the basis of biblical view. And first of all, let me, let me tell you one thing that we are trying to understand these things uh, with uh, uh, our, our limited intellectual capacity. So I cannot guarantee that whatever I understood about the future events or the life after the death are absolutely right, that we will know the reality after our death and resurrection, okay? Now, we do not understand the, the clear picture or we do not get any clear picture about the life after the death or the future events or something. And personally, I cannot guarantee you that whatever I said is absolutely right, but there will be some corrections and there will be some differences in my, um, in my understanding and in my teachings also. But we are trying to, I mean, uh, understand what is the plain meaning of the Bible, plain meaning of the Bible, because my intellectual uh, power is very low, not only mine, but also all of our knowledge is limited so we will not get all the points and we will not, we will not be able to understand or grasp all the uh, future events with uh, our limited intellectual power. But regarding the faith and the fundamental doctrines of the Bible, we must have a clear knowledge. 
okay, regarding the faith, our faith, what is our faith and what we believe and what is the fundamental doctrines of Bible. Because in order to go to heaven, in order to, uh, in order to become a real Christian, we should know what is our faith and what is the fundamental doctrines of the Bible. So we must be very clearly known to those points. At the same time, we may not be knowing what is going to happen in the future. So uh, as we move on, uh, if, you, if you get any doubt, uh, doubt then uh, feel free to ask me. Uh, if I know the answer, I will surely try to answer the, uh, answer the doubt or question and I will make it clear. Or if I do not know the answer for sure, I will say, I don't know, okay? Because I am not a perfect person. I don't know many things, but whatever I know and whatever I understood from, from Bible and from other sources, I'm just giving you, okay? So if I don't know the answer, I will say, I don't know. Then after that, I will try to uh, uh, study about that uh, more and more, and uh, uh, I will give you the answer later, okay? So that is going to happen. Then uh, the hell, uh, when we study about the hell, uh, the hell is divided into two divisions, okay? The hell is divided into two divisions, okay? That is the place of torment, torment, the place of torment, and also the eternal hell, okay? Let us have uh, uh, some idea about the hell and the heaven. Uh, about the heaven, we won't, be, we won't be having the time to discuss about heaven today, but we will just uh, uh, discuss about hell. Okay, so uh, the hell is divided into two divisions, okay, uh, especially, so the first one is the place of torment, the place of torment, and the second one is the eternal hell, okay, the eternal hell, okay, so let us study about the first one, the place of torment, the place of torment, you will read the verses also, and we will explain, okay, the place of torment, uh, in Malayalam it is written, uh, yadana stalam, okay, yadana stalam. This is the temporary hell. This is the temporary hell. Okay. Yadana Stalam or uh, the place of torment is the temporary hell. Uh, and also, uh, according to the uh, anatomy of the earth, the scientists divided the earth mainly into four layers. Okay. Four layers are there for the, for the uh, earth, according to the anatomy of the uh, earth. Okay. That is... Uh, the crest and the mantle and the core and the inner core, okay? So you can see that in the picture now. You can see that in the picture now, okay? The crest is there and the mantle is there, core is there and the inner core is there, okay? Actually, I am not good in science, but uh, <laughs> trying to remind you some of the common informations from this area, I know that Many of you are well aware about and many of you are uh, well knowledgeable about the science and uh, all those things, but uh, I understood this one and I'm just giving you, okay? And uh, uh, the, okay, you, you can think about uh, these um, four layers of uh, uh, earth, that is the innermost part of the earth is the inner core, okay? The innermost part of the earth is inner core that you can see in the picture. And that is the hottest layer of the earth. That is the hottest layer of the earth. And the, and the heat of that layer is proved as 5,430 degrees Celsius, centigrade. How much? The, hot, the, the heat of that layer, the heat of that inner core is almost 5,430 degree centigrade. Okay, so that is the latest calculation. And in uh, Fahrenheit, it comes 9,806. 9,806 is the Fahrenheit of that particular area, which is known as the layer of the earth, which is the inner core. Okay, and uh, we know one thing that the, the water usually will get fully heated in 100 degree, okay, or 100 degree centigrade. And also the iron will melt in 1538 degrees centigrade. 1538 degree centigrade, the iron will be melted. Okay? But just think about how much horrible it will be in the inner core layer of the earth. 
what is the what is the heat or what is the heat of the inner uh, layer what is the heat of the inner layer of the core what is that i mean 5430 degree centigrade okay so in in 1538 if the iron is melted then how much horrible will be the situation of the inner core layer of the earth you know the reason that i said about this thing is most of the theologians and bible scholars says that this place is known as the known in the bible as the place of torment okay most of the theologians i mean i am not i am not uh, i mean uh, fully sure about uh, if this view is okay or not but let me let me just conclude that in that way i mean the, the, most of the theologians are believing that uh, uh, this place of torment is the is the layer of that earth which one is down to the earth the uttermost uh, end of the end of the earth that is the inner core inner core is the place and the spirit of the wicked and the unbelieving people who already died and who is dying now is in this temporary hell this is called as the temporary hell and now the spirit of the wicked people those who already died and also the unbelieving people who already died and who are dying now that is going to the temporary hell now we will go to the uh, what the bible speaks about the, the 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 compartments of the temporary hell okay so i was i mean uh, uh, i was i mean uh, discussing with the, the temporary hell the temporary hell okay so there are uh, there are mainly three compartments for the temporary hell there are mainly three compartments for the temporary hell okay uh, with that we will try to close our class today and uh, if you have any uh, questions you can uh, you can just uh, i mean uh, tell me and uh, i will i will try to clarify maybe in the next class okay we will look into that point only okay so the uh, the three main compartments of the temporary hell okay the first one is the hades the hades or uh, uh, it is it is known as the yadana stalam okay yadana stalam hades <clears throat> okay what is that um when you read luke chapter 19 verse 23 it is there okay in luke chapter 19 verse 23 we can see the word hades can you read that verse 19 why, why then did you not put my money in the bank and at my coming i might have i might have collected it with interest yeah um Which one you did here? Luke chapter nineteen verse twenty three. Uh, about yeah, yeah, same verse. Yeah, read right, once again, nineteen twenty three. Why then did you not put my money in the bank, and at my coming I might have collected it with interest? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah it it is actually about the uh, about the lazarus and uh, uh, lazarus and the rich person where it is that verse uh, can you just find it out the rich man and the lazarus chapter 16 yeah chapter 16 yeah sorry Yes, uh, read uh, uh, chapter sixteen, verse twenty-three. Uh, Elsa. Okay, and in Hades, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus by, at his side. Okay, so this is this is very familiar. Uh, 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 I mean, uh, passage for everyone of us means you know we all know that about the rich man and uh, the Lazarus. Okay, so the rich man in Hades. So here we see that. Uh, uh in hades he lifted up his eyes being in torment and saw abraham for away and lazarus in his bosom okay so uh, this is called the yadana stalam or you can call it as a hades okay so lazarus went to the bosom of abraham and uh, 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 
the rich man, the rich man went to the Hades, the rich man went to the Hades, okay? So uh, uh, about the uh, Lazarus and about the bosom of Abraham, we will be discussing uh, when we study about heaven, okay? We'll be discussing when we study about heaven, uh, about the bosom of Abraham, what is the difference between this and that, okay? Now the second, second uh, uh, point or the second uh, uh, department or compartment is uh, the outer darkness, the outer darkness, okay? So in, in, in Malayalam it is, uh, what is that? Etum Purathula Irita. Etum Purathula Irita is the Malayalam for that. The outer darkness. That is in Matthew chapter 22, verse 13. Uh, 13. Matthew 22, 13. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Elsa. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him, bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth. Yes. Uh, what will be there? There will be, there will be, uh, yeah, weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay. In Malalam, it is saying, So this is the outer darkness. Okay. So outer darkness, it is say, it says that then the king said to his servants, uh, bind him hand and food and throw him into the outer darkness. Okay. So this is what uh, we read that there will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth, okay? This is outer darkness. And the third one is abyss. The third one is abyss, and also it is known as the bottomless pit. It is known as the bottomless pit, uh, Agatha Kubo, in, in Malayalam, Agatha Kubo. So that is what we read in Luke chapter eight, verses 31, and also Revelation chapter nine, verse two. We will read that verse also. Luke chapter eight, verse 31. And they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Revelation 9 to us. He opened the shaft of the bottomless pit, and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft. Okay, this is, this is called abyss or, or uh, bottomless pit. Okay, Agatha Kuba. So these are, the, these are the three compartments of the temporary hell. Okay, or the to, uh, the, the place of torment, okay? So these are the uh, main uh, points about uh, the, 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 the hell. And then again, we will study about all the other points. And uh, in the next class, we will study about the, uh, the, those who are eligible to go to the Department of Temporary Hell, okay? So those who are supposed to go to that place, who are those people, okay? We'll be studying about all those points in the next class. Now we will, just, uh, I mean, pray and uh, uh, close our uh, class today. And uh, uh, so as I was uh, discussing about all these points, uh, I know that you may be having some questions, uh, but today we don't have the time to uh, discuss about all those things. You can just write it down there and uh, tell me what is your question and we will uh, discuss in the, uh, in the next class, okay? So we will discuss in the next class. And now uh, let us all uh, commit ourselves in the mighty hand of God. Uh, we will look unto the Lord in prayer and uh, uh, let us all uh, look unto the Lord in prayer and uh, uh, let us pray because uh, I was, I was uh, explaining all these things just to remind you that we are not supposed to go to hell. We are not supposed to go to hell, but we are supposed to go to heaven. Okay, so we have to understand.